Hi, today I'm joined by David Ward and we're going to be discussing the problems you face as a data processing manager of a busy market research agency. We'll also spend a little bit of time talking about our tabulation software, MRDCL. So join me today in this podcast. Hi, I'm Phil Hearn, and today I'm really delighted to be joined by David Wall, someone I've known for many years. David is Data Processing Manager of B2B International, and he's worked there for 12 years and runs a small team responsible for most aspects of data processing, and more of that a little bit later. Interestingly, he claims he never intended to work in market research as he was planning to work in coastal defence in his younger days. Try as I may, I tried to think of a metaphor that perhaps sort of lines up being a data processing manager and somebody who works in coastal defence. And the best I could come up with was perhaps that if you're in coastal defence, you have to defend from the sea. And in data processing manager, perhaps you don't defend the data, but perhaps make the most of it. Still, let's get on with the podcast. So welcome, David. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? All right. Nice to uh, Yes, it's uh, going well. Thank you. Good, good, good. Nice to be talking to you again. Yeah, I think the last time we uh, met was in it was in a pub somewhere near Stockport. So uh, it's been a yeah, while since we've done that. <laughs> <laughs> just for a change. So I, I suppose the first question that this is, I think everyone's asking this question. You know, I, I guess you've been working at home pretty much nonstop the last several months. How how do you find that? Do you find that doing being a data processing manager okay at working at home? Is it better actually, or, or what? Uh, well, yeah, we've been working at home since since March, really, since the very start of the, of the lockdown. Um, and it's been surprisingly seamless. Um, really? Yeah. You'd almost, you'd almost not know everybody was working from home, which is really good. Yeah. Um, I think partly that was because we were all using the, you know, the online teams to communicate while we were in the office and we have offices around the world anyway. Yeah. Um, so everybody was kind of used to, all working remotely from each other. Um, yep. It's not made a huge amount of difference. Um, yep. I guess it's more difficult to plan um, plan the workload and know what everybody's doing in the team because it's a bit easier if you sat there in the same room with each other. Um, but no, there's, there's been absolutely no problems whatsoever. It's been, uh, it's been quite good. Oh, one of my clients was saying to me that actually it's made everybody more organised. So actually, possibly data processing from some aspects has got better because people have had to be more organised and say what's coming up and what's needed when, rather than perhaps just hoping everybody knows. I don't, I don't know if you've experienced that, but I guess that's a, a reality of it. Yeah, I think um, I, I think it's when when you're in an office, you kind of assume people might have heard or you know, word of mouth kind of information right. about projects. And I think it's just making everybody actually write it down and yeah. put it in an email or, um, and, you know, using Teams is great because we have a project uh, page for each project that we do. So everybody involved in that project is updated with all the information they need. Right. Uh, and it's all in one place. So, uh, so no, I don't think it's been a bad thing. I hope when lockdown finishes and we all return back to the office in, in one shape or another, um, that a lot of these things carry on. Well, that's good, that's good actually, isn't it, though? That's a, that's a positive out of, out of COVID, I guess. Um, I mean, one of the things I wanted to sort of perhaps start with is that um, I know your role runs pretty much from start to be beginning as, as far as data processing goes, from you know, getting the questionnaire set up right through to supplying a dashboard maybe if you, if you see that's the two ends of the of, of the work um i've all I've, I've worked as you know in data processing we did work together many years um i always think one of the biggest problems in data processing that i used to find was that you, you hit bottlenecks in any process and they're one of the biggest problems that you tend to face um given that you cover quite a, a wide range of tasks in, in what you oversee um uh, What's what do you find the sort of biggest bottleneck in delivering what researchers and clients need in, in, in performing your role? Um, I would say we don't generally have an awful lot of bottlenecks, and it's not necessarily down to any particular part of the process, really. 
it's more to do with timings changing because you know we we might have 15 20 different projects running at the same time all in data processing in one shape or form but and it doesn't take a lot for you know the timings a questionnaire's late and one comes in early they clash so it's it's more you know the, the timings of things that right, cause the practicalities of, of, of when yeah rather on the top than of each other yeah. process yeah. yeah yeah i mean if i was to pick a process i would say it would be doing um probably the dashboards because you know we i have a small team that uh, that do quite a lot of the different elements of, of data processing um, and not everybody can do every bit of it yeah. so I think you know, maybe the, the dashboard side of things is more reliant on a smaller number of people that can that can actually do it yeah yeah that um, makes sense to me and that's that's just a case of you know training over time and improving it um, yeah yeah just spreading the skills basically amongst the team. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, so if I was to pick a particular area, I think that would probably be the, be the be toughest the one. bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, I mean, and I should say this and uh, not perhaps uh, leave you embarrassed by this, but I think one of the things I think you're very good at, David, and from having worked with you over many years, is that you're very good at looking at how things, how processes work and looking at productivity, trying to find better ways of doing things. And I, I've always thought this, I, I always, I've always thought that senior management in many companies, and I'm not saying that's true of International at all, uh, in many companies undervalue that because one thing that I think you and I probably both know is that data processes is not like a lot of things where a lot of things you might be able to do things 10% more quickly if you've got somebody who's more efficient or has better tools to do it. Data processing, if it's done badly, um, can take twice as long, five times as long, whether that's the people, the software, or just the approach that people people uses. Um, is there anything particularly, uh, and as I say, I know you like to look at processes and try and find ways of streamlining or looking at you know, perhaps tangential ideas that might improve things is there any sort of things that you think most have helped you do your job well to improve productivity whether that be training staff whether that be better software improving the way clients colleagues work with you what and what sort of things do you think you've, you've been able to bring to your role that have made you or perhaps your team rather more productive Oh, that's, that's, um, that covers a, a whole range of different uh, different areas. I mean, it, uh, it does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I, I find some of the best things that we've managed to automate are often the simple things. Um, yeah. you know, just just small things that get done on a on a regular basis, um, and it's not necessarily all in confirm it that we use it could be in visual basic in excel um or even ways of keeping the the research team up to date with fieldwork progress without having to you know go to the fieldwork managers all the time to to get updates that way um, yeah i mean just just simple examples like um you know we we do receive a lot of contact lists from from our clients um and particularly on the tracking projects yeah. After one or two waves of the projects, a couple of months, then you start to look at actually I'm doing the same thing every yes. single month. What can I break down and automate? Because not yeah. only does it make it quicker, you're less likely to get it wrong because you're not having to repeat the same process all the time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the biggest things I think is some of the projects have been running for quite a long time now. Um and it's just having that step where you can just click a button and it does 80% of the work for you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's managing the data in Excel, I think, is uh, is one of the big areas that we use automation. Yes. Obviously, it's difficult. If, I mean, the key to that is getting the same structure of file each time, which is... Uh, sometimes easier easier said than done. Yeah, um, no, no. yes, I agree. But yeah. I think when you I think when you explain why you need it to be consistent, then it kind of you you find that that does does happen a bit more often. Yeah. Um, 
But, you know, I do simple things like um, we've just converted over to a new telephone system, which needs the format of the phone numbers in a particular way. And obviously we have multinational clients with customers all over the world. So obviously those phone numbers vary in format. So I've just written a quick function in, in Excel that you can just type in what country the number's from and it'll format it in a way that, yeah. uh, that can just be uploaded in to confirm it. And it's very, very simple, but it saves so much time. Yeah, and, and um, reduces errors, of course, with it. That's the other big thing, is you're not fiddling around yeah, with I mean, it, what's does, gone wrong. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does format most of the numbers. So, you know, we've got something there that will format phone numbers for 30 or more different countries now. So, yeah, and it's something that's really simple to add to. Yes, um, yes. So it is just little things like that that, yeah. Yeah. you know, might not seem worthwhile to begin with but when you're doing the same process 40 50 60 times a year you do start to yes yeah, i doing this time. Yeah. i mean i think yeah, you make yeah. a really good point about tracking studies um and I'm, I'm not saying this just to blow our own trumpet here at all but i know i i, I saw the way a client was processing a tracking study i just happened to be at their office and i got i managed to sort of get i got asked to have a look at it basically a project and I said to the, the boss of the company, I said, I think this is being done very badly between you and me, this project. I think we can probably get what somebody's spending. I think they're spending about 30, 40 hours a month on the project, down to probably two or three with a bit of work. And they said, I don't believe you. And, and we could, <laughs> because if the whole <laughs> thing was restructured and done in a different way, which the restructuring took, I think, about a week's work. But then when it ran every month, the project, it took about, two hours to update each month rather than this 30 40 hours that somebody was trawling through and changing lines of code one at a time you know and the yeah. savings were huge and uh, i think some particularly tracking stages people need to step back and, and look at what it is they're doing just as you say and and say well hang on i've done this last something similar last month and likewise with data getting data organized so that you can just push it in and do whatever you've got to do with it. I think that's really important. So, yeah, very good points, I think, there that you're making. I think it's difficult to uh, to step back from it sometimes when, you, when you're in the middle of doing it every month. I think it just needs to always make yourself step back and question how you're doing something. Well, of course, the, yeah, because well, sometimes you've got to spend 10 hours to sort of to, to, to save that, to, to spend more time to save that time later. And if you've got somebody who's desperate to get the project, you know, they want to say, well, don't worry about that now, do it next month. And of course, the next month there's something else going on. Yeah, it never happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do it the month yeah. after then, I mean, you know. <laughs> but I mean, we have some quite large tracking projects, and I think we run them, I think we run them really well. Um, yeah. But you know, that we have some that have. 28 30 different waves of data where the questionnaires have evolved over time and yeah. you know sometimes it's just worthwhile sitting and thinking actually let's consolidate waves one to 30 into one block of data now almost to keep it tidy as you as you move along as well um that's right so, yes. yeah i mean I, I, I quite like the tracking studies I think yeah I, I, I think i think they're a challenge too i like tracking studies yeah i think that's one of the things i like working on Mm. Um, good stuff. Um, I, I, one of the things I spotted in your your bio you sent me, I asked, I asked for an interesting fact or two, and, I, and uh, you, you, you duly obliged. And the one I, I did like, actually, was the one where uh, you apologised already to B2B International, just in case anyone from B2B International tunes in there and said that's not your best job ever, your best job ever, was when you uh, had a job working at the old Tra Trapper Cricket Ground. Uh, so you could actually uh, watch cricket while you were sort of working and you actually managed to see the ashes work while you were there. How'd you get away with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had uh, we had front row seats as part of the ground staff. Oh, um, brilliant. So we, we, we were running onto the pitch with, uh, with the rain covers and yeah. being booed at by 15,000 people, which was... Uh, <laughs> and all, all you could think of when you were running onto the pitch was... Uh, don't fall under the covers. No, 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 of course not. These, uh, yeah. these videos on, on and uh, yeah, one thing you don't want to do is trip and end up underneath at all. 
Yeah, I, 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 know, I know some people, I, I'm, I'm a big Sussex supporter, I'm a cricket, and I know that they've built some offices there now. And I just noticed recently that some of the people who run the offices there have just blacked out the window so that the staff can't look out the window and watch the cricket ground go, which I think is a bit mean, really, you know, working at a cricket ground and then not being able to, 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 to be able to watch the cricket going on outside. Um, but I did notice in, you were mentioning about Manchester United, but I guess that's to do with this season, is it? You kept, you kept that out just for this year, did you? Oh, no, you know, I didn't even trust my eyes. <laughs> uh, no, I still follow them. Um, through good and bad. Through good and bad. All right, we'll let you off then. Not particularly good at the moment, but, uh, you know, things will, things will improve. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go but going back on something else now that goes over a lot of years, uh, and that's the software, of course, that, that you use of ours still, MRDCL. I, I think I, I was trying to work out how many years you, you've known and worked with MRDCL. It's probably best not to admit it because it, I know it's more than 15. So uh, let's not let's yeah, not let's, let's... started. So I was going to say that that started back at my uh, days working at Adelphi International. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's not start giving ages away. That's that's not good. I don't think. No, no. Not, not for not <laughs> yeah, for me. Yet. Not for me anyway. Uh, I mean, what I was going to ask you: what what, what what do you find? I'm not going to do, do a sales job for us. Is, is there things that at MRD still you find that are particularly good about it that you like? What I like is yeah. um, being able to use Excel with it. I think yeah. that's. Because we use that so much, particularly with our trackers. And I know you you developed on track a while ago. Um, That's right. And when I joined B2B International and had a bit of free time, as you do when you first start a job sometimes, um, I wrote my own version of it. Okay. Um, it doesn't have all the whistles and bells that on track does, but ha having that to run our tracking projects... Um, is a real, uh, real help to us. Yeah. So, I think that that's kind of the one thing that really sticks out to me. Um, yeah. In addition to using Excel, it, it's good that if we're producing brand fun funnels for analysis, we can write MRDCL scripts that you can just write a data statement and it'll just run the same script each time. Okay. And you yeah. just put in the parameters, and you yeah. know, being able to do things like that. Um, really really helps and yeah. i use that a lot when yeah. i worked at adelphi okay um, yes. and and at mrdc um yeah just writing little scripts that don't save a lot of time the first time you do it but as you you know go use it 100 times during the year again it, it soon adds up and uh, it just makes life a lot easier so you know i think it's just again the automation kind of side of things as well it's uh it's very flexible as well, I think. Yeah. I don't yeah, think I've ever so. had something that we've been asked to do that we haven't been able to, to do. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to have that confidence in the software. That if somebody throws a problem at you that it might not be easy, but you kind of, you can see how you might do it using using MRDC. So, yeah. you know, I think the flexibility as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know I, I, talking about you know, writing your own version of on track that does what you want. I've, I've seen now a few different flavors of that, that various people have come up with their own ways of doing things. I know someone who's managed to import data from um, I can't remember what Decipher software is called, but whatever that's called, um, so that it feeds a spreadsheet that automates a tracking study. And MRDCL just reads all that and uh I mean, they 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 made what was I think I can't I think they were using quantum before, but what they made what was a really complex process, you know, just button presses now basically um, by feeding spreadsheets that the MRDCL reads and off it goes and and does all does all the analysis and they've got their own version of on track that basically that does all that and so you're you're not alone you're not the only person who's done that but you know it, it, I think that's a really a powerful feature of of, of uh, MRDCL of being able to customize things to do what suits you um so it's great good to, good to hear that you're using it in that way and that you, you built your own on track i'm sure it's better than the one that was original anyway or certainly suited your needs better anyway and well, i know it was more tailored to what we do yeah definitely. yeah that's right that's right that's right whereas on track was is very general purpose if you like um 
And I know we've, we've given you a, a, a preview of the new release of MRDCL, which is coming out on the 1st of January. Um, although I expect nobody will want it on the 1st of January, if I want it on the 2nd or 3rd of January. Um, any any particular features in that that interest you from what you've seen of the of the sort of preview and perhaps any experience of it? Well, I must admit, I haven't had time to look at it properly yet. Um, okay. This is typically typically our busiest time of year ramping up towards Christmas. Um, okay. All right, but we've certainly <clears throat> we've certainly made use of um, the extended file width that it will read. I think the limit was a hundred thousand uh, columns, wasn't it previously? That's right. That's it. Yeah. Thereabouts. Um, and while I think if you've got files that get an awful lot bigger than that, you maybe need to question whether you're structuring your files properly. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it is difficult to not creep over over that limit. So, um, you know, I think that that will definitely be useful. Yeah. Especially where you've got projects with lots of loops in Confirm it and yeah, you know, large brand lists that you've that you're using. You know, the files can soon get quite large. Um, so, I mean, that that will certainly certainly help. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of new stuff in there for importing as well from SPSS and all that sort of stuff, which you may or may not find a value. But um, there's a, there's a brand new interface and a color coded editor. There's all sorts of stuff in there, which I think you'll find interesting when you get a chance to dig through it. So I'll leave you to explore that sometime. Yeah, I mean, I'm always interested in in looking at new things. I'm even learning Python at the moment. Oh, are you? Brilliant stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, just just to see how we can maybe take data out and confirm it with Python and maybe run things like, you know, data cleaning, recoding, um, and then feed that straight back into, into confirm it. So lots yeah. of little, little projects on the, on the go at once. Um, and it might not be useful, but I think just going through the process sometimes can yeah. trigger some idea of, of how you can work a bit better. Um, so yeah, we'll certainly be looking at, at the new release. Good, good. And, and, and the thing that we're adding next year for the release at, at, towards the end of next year is that we're, you're going to be able to write a spec where, so that you can put data into charts and reports as well automatically as well. So there'll be a scripting language for that next year. So if you want to update yeah, I mean, that PowerPoint would be chart, I mean, you, you'll be able to do that. on tracking projects, I think. Exactly, yeah, that's what it's for. It's, it's, it's mainly aimed at tracking projects, really, so that you can write a script that goes beyond you know, doing tables. You can say, we'll just put this bit of data in this chart here on slide two and all that sort of stuff, and there's a script for that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, all, that's all for next year, though. That's a bit premature, all that, but uh, it's something to look forward to. Something to look forward to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something to keep you interested. Um, and, you know, I, I'm just going to talk about Automation, you've already raised that actually. Um, that uh, you know, MRD Silk does allow or it certainly helps to improve automation. It's sort of become a bit of a buzzword at market research conferences this year. I think that that, that uh, everyone's woken up to automation being a good thing and about time too, really, because a lot of the things that you can do now, you could do I almost say 20 years ago, some of the things certainly in Excel and that you could do 20 years ago, but suddenly people have woken up, I'm glad to say. Um, do you do you sort of see any things that that um, could be improved still further with automation? Maybe bits of software talking to each other better, um, or just improvements to software that could it actually make that even better for you, rather than or whether you've obviously got to quite a good level of, of automation by some of the things you described already in this in this uh, conversation. But anything else that you can think of that might improve that? still further whether it be features in software or whatever well i think for I think for me you kind of hit the nail on the head with the with your first point was different market research software talking to each other a little better um just to give you a bit of more flexibility to pick and choose what you might use for a particular task so you know you, i mean we use confirm it and yeah. you can do so much with it it's got the whistles and bells, but that might not be always suitable for some jobs. You might not need something like that. Yeah. Um, 
but you might want to move the data between them um, if, if some of the processes are inconfirm it. Um, so I think you know just getting um, software to talk to each other a little better um, would be something I think could be improved. Um, you know, there's lots of lots of APIs and things like that for transferring data between um, different dashboard packages and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, you know, I think just making it a little easier for people that uh, might not have the the background and the the knowledge to to be able to do it, just nice, easy interfaces and that kind of stuff. Um, I are think. You that aware, my... Are you aware of the new API that's hope that that is is being built for market research? The TS API one or SAPI, I think I think it's pronounced. That's just been announced. Uh, no, I'm not. No. Ah, well, no. I go off to SAPI. I think it's got all, but you need to check that. because I'm not sure. Um, which is sort of, I, I think the TS comes from Triple S, but it's an API being built now. So look. Hopefully, you can move. Well, we'll be able to move stuff between one software package and another much more effectively um, using an API. How far that will get, and, and how many people adopt it, of course, is the next question. Because you need everybody to adopt it. Um, just like Triple S is fairly widely adopted now, but obviously, everyone needs to adopt this API, um, and other business areas need to adopt it as well. So you can get stuff mm. in turn. But, you know, business information software and that sort of stuff. Uh, but I think it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not just been announced, but I think it's quite exciting. Yeah, and it's not just transferring data between software that we use internally. It's linking things into customer CRM systems and that kind of stuff. Um, I think that's the biggest growth area, isn't it? I think, or, or biggest. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of, uh, lots of interest yeah. in doing that. Yeah, the clients are sort of expecting it. You know, I, I talked to one one sort of non-market research client we have recently, and they sort of said, you know, they get all their data they get provided from other suppliers easily uploaded into their systems now. It's almost seamless, their market research data, you know. <laughs> they can't get it, or they can, but it all seems like a, a tiresome process. So uh, mm. I think, you know, that's something the market research needs to wake up to a bit, actually, and be able to provide data better. So... Whether this team it makes sense AI. to do that, doesn't it? Because it does. If you're running lots of customer satisfaction surveys, where you, you know, you're sending alerts to to account managers to deal with issues and that kind of thing, then it, it just makes sense to have it all within one system yeah. and the client's end. That's right. That's right. Um, so yeah, I hope that's something that really comes off in the next year or two because I think it really benefit everybody in market research actually not just yeah not just the software vendors but i think actually all the research agencies and, and the clients as well so i really hope that initiative comes off we'll see there's certainly good plans for it it's a good start um and, and sort of finally before I, I do a final final question a bit but finally anything in mrd still that you think we could add to it to make it a uh, to make it better, uh, just so you know, because you, you might want to try and win this prize. We are having a competition in the first quarter of next year where we're going to offer five hundred dollars to the, to anybody who comes up with the best idea that we actually use in in next year's release. So um, I'm sure you'll get well, well, there's you know, an incentive. Well, <laughs> but you're putting a hundred entries, though, wouldn't you, Dave? That's the trouble with you. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the hope that one would stick. Yeah. <laughs> But is there any feature that comes to mind uh, that you think would really improve MRDCL, even if it's something small or something major, of course, as well? I think one thing I would like is um, maybe the outputs of the table being a little more visually pleasing. Yeah. It's the first thing that comes to mind. HTML um, tables, perhaps, something like that. Yeah, 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 something that's, like that. That's, just, that's, that that's, be, that's um, in the plan for next year, that is. So you can't claim that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that, that won't win the prize then. <laughs> no, it won't. No, no. Bad luck. It's already on the development list for next year. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I think although the, I think the outputs, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with them. They're very uh, functional and do the job, I think. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, people like uh, things to be a bit more visually appealing. Yeah, and it just okay. involves less work if you're sending them on to somebody else. Um, yeah, we, we've done some work yeah, in this release to make be... 
sorry, yeah, as, as we've done some work to make the Excel reports now be more automated and better, but not, yeah. there'll be some design stuff that can go into that at the 2021 release that makes it even better. So, uh, end of next year, we'll, 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 have, yeah. we'll, we'll have achieved that. Well, finally, uh, I always ask this at the end of these podcasts and uh, I like to put people on the spot with this question. So I have two more questions for you. Nothing to do with market research. Um, I'm going to ask you what your type, favourite type of food is that you like to eat if, if you could choose. And don't say any like somebody did the other day. because you know. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I could say any um, because I do like my food. Um, <laughs> And I think if you ask me that question on another day, I'd probably give you a different answer. Um, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I, I love Italian food. Italian food. Well, there you go. I, yeah, yeah. Ah, well, there you go. All right. Well, I better remember that next time I see you then. And, <laughs> and, and with it, I always ask the second question. If you could choose which country to go to, to visit, what would you, what, which country would you choose? Well, am I allowed to have more than one? Oh, go on, man. You can you can have more than one. I don't normally allow more than one, but I'll let you have more than one. Oh, you see, I've, I've got I've got a list of countries that I'd love to visit. Um, oh I'd quite like to go to Nepal. Um, right. I'd quite like to go to um, Japan. Right. And uh, I think New Zealand as well would be on the list. Well, you could do it in one trip, couldn't you? It's sort of almost. Well, a you could. Trip. You could yeah. combine them all. Um, <laughs> I'm worried if I went to New Zealand, I wouldn't come back. <laughs> oh, that can be a problem, I think, yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Good stuff. Those, those would be my three choices. They're your three choices. I think you're allowed to three choices. Well, David, yeah. thanks very much for joining me on this podcast today. It's been great talking to you. Um, it's good to hear from somebody who's in there. Can I say at the sharp end of dealing with day-to-day -day data processing problems in 2020 and... Uh, how you're managing to survive and do all that. So thanks very much for joining me today. That's quite all right. I think every day is a school day. Uh, <laughs> so I think being, being at the sharp end keeps it, keeps it interesting, that's for sure. Great stuff. Thanks, David. See you okay, soon. thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay,